our official call to worship, I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us now have our invocation and meditation. Once again, we are blessed to be here at Bethsaida to share with you on another Sunday and to offer a message and a word of encouragement in these times. If you would, please bow your head and pray with me. Father, we thank you for this privilege to be here this morning. We pray because we know we want to do all things decent and in order. And we also know here at the house of Bethsaida, much prayer, much power. So we come to you in this hour asking of you to lift us up from these mundane shores and allow us to be servants as we give you praise that you truly deserve. Help us, Father, in this pandemic and this epidemic, one dealing with the virus and another dealing with the virus of killing and racism. Help us, Father, to be mindful that you are still God and that we're still your children. We ask for you to bless the families that we've seen global, the Floyd family, the Aubrey family, the Taylor family, and all the others whose lives have been stricken because of racism, police brutality, but more so ignorance and racism. Thank you, God, for the love of Jesus that will continue in spite of we ask it all in Jesus' name. We pray as we pray for our sick and shut in, hospitalized, as we pray for our seniors, as we pray for our children, as we pray for our families. We ask it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
In this hour today, I'd like for you to think from a message that is steered from the book of Philippians, the second chapter, beginning at verse one. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the spirit, if any bounds and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye may be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in the lowliness of man, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even to death of the cross. i like for you, if you would, from those words from the book of Philippians, think on the topic that I want to share with you in this hour. In the midst of sorrow, there is joy. In the midst of sorrow, there is joy. And our subtopic is having joy in serving God. Having joy in serving God. I've shared with Bethesda, this church family, this specific base of this lesson and this previous Bible class, as I told them, the, few, the next few lessons will be focused on this text that we must understand in the biblical context that God expects of us to have joy in serving him. Bible verses about joy can help Christians who may be going through a difficult season be reminded of the calm happiness through faith in God. Uh, we must learn from the collection of Bible quotes, including this scripture reference, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalms, the 37th edition of Psalm, stanza four. So you see, joy is happiness that comes uh, from having a relationship with the Lord, that you, when the desires of your heart are in you, no matter what you're going through, you can experience joy. Joy is happiness over unanticipated or present good. Joy is happiness over storms that seem to be blissed and consuming you. This is the season in this country of storms, storms that have plagued us across the globe. And now more so in America with the pandemic virus called COVID-19. But this is also a season of the storms of murder, the storms of abuse, the storms of brutality, the storms of abuse that have plagued us from police brutality to racism that has caused marches and protests and a reminder to mankind that black lives do matter. I recall in one of my theological sessions that I heard some 30 years ago in one of the seminaries I was blessed to go to that we need to be reminded that the book of Philippians is about joy in the midst of sorrow. We need to know that the Philippian writer Paul was writing to this church here in Philippi and thanking them for a gift that had been delivered by the person designated a gift to him collected from his members, 
collected and given to him while he's in a captive experience there in Rome. And I reminded of my notes where the teacher said that you need to consider the factor. Do not forget the theological understanding of what's being said in this text that has a bearing on the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, for the Psalm text that I mentioned to you is from the Old Testament. But our text that we are saluting in this hour is from the New Testament. And he said Old Testament reveals, New Testament fulfills. There was a storm, there was a plague when the psalmist wrote, when David penned these words, when he was being pursued by his own son who wanted to kill him, Absalom, for the favor of the high office and the rule of the nation, that in spite of his storm, you need to have joy. God was reminding David that you need to see joy and have the delights of your heart and the desires of your heart because the Lord can make a way out of no way. But now God wants us to see the matter that comes to us through the New Testament experience that's based on Christianity, that the experience of Jesus having already gone to the cross, dying on the cross, being buried in the barred tomb and rising on that third and appointed morning is enough to give us joy for whatever circumstance that we are faced with. My brothers and my sisters, I need to remind you, as Paul reminds the Philippian church, that we ought to be thankful as he thanks in his captive experience of what God has done through us and for us. That in spite of the storm of this pandemic, that in spite of the storm of this epidemic, he's going to make a way out of no way. I'm thankful that I can remind you, in spite of the Trump experience, in spite of the historical accounts of statues being torn down, there are reminders of the plague of slavery, the captive experience of the African American and those alike, that we still can experience joy. The marches that are historic across this world especially this land, that are out of and evolve out of the slave experience, are still being reminded roughly 150 years after the emancipation of the African American and the slave experience. We see it as a storm that has plagued us where Brother Floyd gave his life. It's a gift gave his life because of a knee on his neck from an abusive police officer. That there is a gift that comes from that. That has caused us now to unite together and be in one accord as the text says, because we are our brother's keeper, because we are supposed to be Christ-like. There is a gift that has come out of this experience that we can see that's going global because of one man's death, that is, I can't breathe because someone was ugly to me, abused me, and took my life in spite of. God is able, my brothers and my sisters, to overcome traditions that seem to be ugly. God is able to overcome those who can't understand. God is able to give us an understanding. The way is in holding on to old traditions that historically have been symbols of racism, evil, division, and aversion from the direct God expects that are out of a behavior of charity. But God wants us to take our charity, which is love in action, and tell the world no more of this no more. No more of abusing one because of the color of his skin. No more of showing ugliness in spite of your unwillingness to accept me as equal. My Bible tells me 
we who truly are men and women of Christ follow the way. That way is Jesus. What we have seen recently are those whose behavior models Jesus. Those whose platform is not about themselves, but about being their brother's keeper. This is what God wants us to do, to exhibit our joy and service to him. Those who protest, symbolize, march up the king's highway, recognizing that black lives matter, that all lives matter, that as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord, and that the service to the Lord will have joy. I like acronym studies, and I would assume I've worn my people out giving a letter and what that letter may say. But I got to remind you that my acronym studies basically come from what God has exhibited in this Bible, that we are supposed to keep as joy as we serve him. So let me, in my weak way, to share a few notes with you, and I'll take my seat for this hour. The J in joy is Jesus is real because he lives in our soul. And since he lives in our soul, I'm going to treat everybody right because the Lord treats us right. Because he wakes us up every morning, stars us on our merry way because he looks beyond our faults and sees to our knees. Because he is the reason for the season. Jesus is real. I know, because I know for myself, that in spite of being in the midst of sorrow, there's joy that can make a way out of no way. The old in joy stands for we need to have open minds and we need to open our hearts to the Lord. We need to demonstrate the way of Jesus, who is the light of the world. And such is the light right now with the marches that are protesting and reminding the world that black lives matter. Such is the light of the world that we need to be like a city on a hill, letting our light so shine. The why is for you, you and you that we will be held accountable to God because all of us will stand before the Lord and give an account of our stewardship. The right way to live. That's the right way to live. For somebody might say, what is the right way to live, Dr. Carter? And I'll say, thank you for asking because I'm dying to tell you. I'm dying to let you know that writers telling the world like George Floyd did and that when somebody tells you and reminds you that you can't breathe, instead of kneeing on their neck, we pull together in a symbol of Jesus and show love like Jesus and respond to call Jesus like Jesus called on a man at the pool of Bethesda that when trouble and the water is trouble, we will add our brothers and our sisters holding hands in love. Like Martin Luther King said on that great and getting up morning, that we will, that we will respond in chaos and community. We will be mindful to be God's people. Rise up and stand up being responsible to tell the world that God does not like ugly, but God expects for us to lift up the blood-stained banner and remind the world that Jesus is real. And that my mind has stayed on Jesus, and that I and you are accountable for our brothers and our sisters. I'm glad as I prepare to close this message that I do have joy, joy in my heart, deep down in my heart, joy 
that reminds me day in and day out about the love that God has demonstrated. That love when he came down through 42 generations. That love when he was born of a virgin. That love when he gave walking to the lame and sight to the blind. That love that is still significant in our lives today that will take us beyond a pandemic, that will take us beyond an epidemic because he's coming back for his church. And until he comes back, we need to be Christ-like. We need to be brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to show our love by demonstrating joy in our service to him. I thank God for the privilege that I've experienced in my walk on life to understand what the Lord has done for me. For everybody ought to have a personal testimony like Paul demonstrates in this text. As he reminds us of God's goodness, as he shows us just what God expects for us to demonstrate, that we need to feel our joy, that we need to be like-minded, that we should have love, that we should be of one accord and of one man, and let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Be in lowliness of mind and let each esteem other better than themselves. And most of all, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Uh, let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We need to be like Christ. We need to love one another because his death on the cross was an example of a gift that's been given to us that can help us maintain joy in the midst of sorrow. I'm glad this morning that I need to remind you that that doesn't conclude where the death on the cross and God gave through his son the ultimate gift, that he was buried in a barred tomb. But his resurrection, where he got up on the third and appointed morning, is a symbol that we can rise up and stand up in the midst of this sorrow. Love one another, my brothers and my sisters. My heart goes out to the Floyd family and those alike. My heart goes out to the victims of the COVID-19, where the plague seems like it's not stopping or that it's endless. But my heart goes out even to the White House, who refuses to accept the realization that we are God's people. And he cannot separate us from the love of God. But more so, my heart goes out to those who don't know the Lord for yourself because you're missing out on joy in serving God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is time now for me to extend the invitation of the church. We open these doors that have already been opened by Christ for those who want to give their life to Christ.
also want to remind you that we want to pray for the less fortunate, especially Sister Nene Shelby, Sister Peggy Prentice. We want to pray for Sister Merlin Underwood and her son and his surgery. I want to pray for my seniors of the church. I want to pray for my children. But we all are God's children. I want to pray for my families. But most of all, I want to pray for times like these as a reminder that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you all. I want to remind you in this hour that it's a privilege to give back to God what's already his. So we here at Bethsaida have tithe that's available in support of this church. And we remind our members and those alike and loved ones and friends that if you want to give towards our effort of this ministry in Christ, you can do so as been and will be shown to you by calling the church or contacting us. We'll make means to receive your gift and put it to work in serving the Lord. And we also want to remind you, do not forget that in times like these, rise up and stand up. God bless you all. Considering the circumstances of the spikes and Kentucky being one of those 19 states that is spiking, that we will not open the doors of our church until after the first Sunday of July. I'm thankful, as I recommended it to the officers of the church, that they were in agreement with me. This is the best interest for you, and it's the best interest for me, the best interest for all of us. Stay safe. Practice social distancing. Wear your mask. And be in God and in prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.